Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Let us start this lecture with a thought process. We need to ignite our inner fire to rejuvenate ourselves and our motherland. So, uh, let us recall what we learnt in the last lecture. We basically looked at you know uh, some of the applications of the combustion, in which I was trying to give one impression about the scope of the combustion which is quite vast. So, uh, let us look at you know in earlier days people were using lighting systems unlike today where we are using very sophisticated lighting system, but they were depending at the time uh, earlier on the combustion system. For example, this is a flame right, it used to give uh, light to the people also right and it is also being used today as a part of rituals in our uh, life and which also indicate that you need to uh, ignite the inner fire okay and similarly candle light this is uh, you might be might have enjoyed the candle light dinner so, um, and whenever there is a um, blackout or the light will be off or the electricity will not be there, then we always search for a candle you know to uh, get and lamp uh, this was being used earlier days even it is being used by the poor people uh, of this country who are not having privilege to have electricity. So, they do use and uh, even today if you go to slum areas in cities and villages you will get this right and still people are using and of course the this is the petromax um, light which is having a mantle here this is a mantle which will be containing some kind of a chemical here whenever it will be heated it will glow right so, these are the uh, systems where used and are being used also on emergency and used by the poor people of this country and which is uh, if you look at that way it is sustainable also to some extent <coughs> and simple system, but however, his uh, efficiency luminous efficiency if you look at it is uh, quite low, but in modern time after the this industrial revolution you know people started looking at uh, what you call better lighting systems uh, using the technology like if you look at edition which is around 1880 right and uh, and then after that we got this incandescent lamp of course uh, recently compact fluorescent lamp and this is a uh, you know a linear fluorescent lamp we are using from long time and this today we are at led if you look at the luminous efficiency is something this is lumen per watt is increasing. Keep in mind that these are all items whatever I have shown you which is having higher um, luminous efficiency is basically worked on the consuming the electricity right. And background back up it what from where I will get electricity mostly from the fuel combustion ok. So, the background you know this is your uh, forefront or the you know what you could see, but background is that your combustion. So, combustion plays a very important role of course, the luminous efficiency is there, but in this luminous efficiency let me tell you that it is from the electrical power what they have given, but if I use the combustion and then from that electricity conversion then this will be very very low values keep in mind are you getting for example this is around something maybe 100 uh, 60 70 kind of thing led so it will be very low why conversion efficiency will be low then conversion efficiency will be low to uh, mechanical energy and then mechanical to the 
electrical that also will be low. So, therefore, this will be very low values because the power whatever you are consuming is much higher. So, another things which we enjoy particularly in your uh, you know marriage or any other occasions right and uh, Diwali. What is this? These are firecrackers right and you could see there are several colors you could get right. Can anybody tell me how I can get these colors because color we like and that too when it is a sky, open sky. Of course, noise we do not like, but lot of people like it. We cause also noise pollution, right? particularly in Diwali night and 2-3 days uh, before and after, we will be having lot of problems. right? Yes, like how I will get this color, any idea? Huh? Chemicals, okay. so what are those chemicals? Achha? Very good. And likewise. likewise. Okay. okay. So uh, these are basically. Let us look at. We will get red from the lithium. And calcium, if I'll use, basically we are using metal, not chemical. Of course, if you call it chemical, it is not. I'm like in not that sense, but metal. Calcium, uh, orange and sodium yellow, and then barium green, right? copper of course, blue and potassium and uh, you know iron, gold, all those things, white, aluminum, there is various combination they do and then get various colors, right. Why I am saying that you should take interest in those things, you know how they make and what are those things. It is not that only you will have to look at fundamentals, fundamentals is essential, but you should generate some interest. Why I am talking about this thing? So that you will be interested in that, you know, that is the main motive of talking about it. And uh, if you look at uh, there is a another applications what I have not discussed, but I would like to draw your attention is that ammunition, you know, are you getting? Ammunition means what? Basically weapons, right? Like uh, we got uh, subdued by the invaders because of what? because of we are not having fire arms. That is the reason what people gave because technologically advanced. And uh, the fire arms is basically from the combustion sources, okay. Your uh, what you call even uh, the you will fire a bullet or a any other things you know like will be missiles systems and most of the things will be basically combustion. So, therefore, combustion plays an important role. Um, so, um, what I will say now, I will have to summarize some of the applications in this diagram. Okay. So, if you look at, we started with a fire because fire plays a very important role and today also fire is being celebrated, but one has to worry about its uncontrollability or it should not you know destroy the people or the properties. Okay. So, therefore, control fire is very essential. right? And then of course, uh, there is a Wankel engine which is a very nice engine which some of you may not aware this engine I have shown here, which comes under internal combustion engine. It is not being used very much and unfortunately in India uh, only uh, in one place in NL. National Aeronautical Laboratory in Bangalore, they are doing some work. I do not know the status, but it is a very interesting uh, what you call compact engine. And IC engine, of course, you may say, what is IC engine? That is also a IC engine, Wankel engine. IC engine can be of two types one is three types, rather, Wankel piston engine and the gas turbine engine. There is a several other engines also in under piston engine. If you look at that, there will be uh, spark ignition engine, compression ignition engine, and maybe gaseous fuel engine. People are now developing, and there will be stalling engine, external combustion, right? And um, the, the also combustion can be used for processing materials, right? For example, I had done some work uh, earlier on this uh, synthesis of nanomaterial using combustion, using flame, right. 
and uh, it is not only for nano material you can use also micro material uh, size materials and other material also processing most of the uh, you know like uh, synthesis you can do also you process the metal right an incinerator i have talked about incinerator of uh, not only the human body but also the other uh, you know waste materials you can incinerate so this i have shown a figure here right and boiler which is the uh, main heart of the power plant is the boiler isn't it boiler is the and nowadays people are talking about super critical technology boiler that means you know critical super critical you might be knowing na, from thermodynamics point of view steam right so um, that is also uh, being used and uh, furnace various kinds of furnace you know like starting from your domestic furnace like where we use for heating purposes to very complex furnace like a blast furnace right okay so gas turbine engine which will be coming under ice engine but i have separated it out uh, that is a different thing right and which is being used keep in mind that this uh, what will be the power level of gas turbine engine any idea order of it will be megawatt okay and whereas uh, if you go to uh, some other small thing like you know uh, ice engine for example piston engine what is used for uav unmanned air vehicles what will be the power will be few watts you know something few watts maybe 20 watts or 50 watt kind of thing you not kilowatt okay so and rocket engine of course is a big uh, you know engines and rocket engines uh, will be various kinds which uh, you might be know, knowing that uh, solid propellant rocket engine liquid propellant rocket engine and then hybrid rocket engines hey, these are all combustion based rocket engines and power plant of course uh, power generation can be by the you know various ways you can use gas turbine engine you can use um, boilers or the steam engines you can combine it and there is in recent time there is a lot of interest in this micro combustors we are my group is working on this on micro combustor is a micro scale that means small one you might be people might be aware that in mit they were trying to um, develop a small micro gas turbine engine you know that was the motivation where which has uh, you know um, uh, generated interest in micro combustors and um, there is also a pulse detonation engines which is coming up well of course it is a challenging one and uh, people are working on that this i have shown here this is uh, if you look at like i have now trying to give a very broad pictures but there might be several engineering applications which might not be coming under this which might i might not have included here right but all those things if you look at you need to understand the fundamental of combustion right and now for knowing this fundamental of combustion you need to aware or learn about the thermodynamics which you are already i will be trying to review some of the things related to the combustion thermodynamics and chemical kinetics is very important which you might have studied in your plus 2 and other engineering particularly chemical engineering people they always you know use it and uh, that is of course when you talk about this uh, you know thermodynamic chemical then you need to look at fluid mechanics right fluid mechanics plays a very important role in combustion and uh, it is not only the fluid mechanics but also the heat and mass transfer also plays a very important role right so in the first part of this course what we will be doing we are basically first looking at the thermodynamics we will just review it i would urge upon you people to relook at it and then we will be moving into the chemical kinetics part then i will be talking about both this heat and mass transfer and fluid mechanics so there is a long way to go uh, why because it is very important to have a grip over this subject and how you can utilize and how can you do then only you will think talk about combustion so therefore combustion is not that e easy subject it is quite complex in positive way it is a very challenging to have a mastery over the combustion if you are a master 
you know, you are having mastery over the combustion, that means you will be knowing all the subject, are you getting? And which is quite challenging. Therefore, you know, it is important to uh, work on this so that you will have a better knowledge about a lot of things which are interrelated, particularly from the practical point of view. So, now coming back to that, like uh, a question might be coming in your mind that uh, what do you mean by fuel? Because fuel and oxidizer are like two side of a coin that is combustion as I told, right. So, therefore, what do you mean by fuel? Any idea? Any idea? Energy, energy content inside it. Energy content inside it, okay. Okay, fine. Now, if it is not having energy content, it won't be considered as a fuel, it will be considered as oxidizer. Can I say this way? Right? Can I say this? <laughs> no, no. For example, like wood, I cannot call it as a fuel as compared to the petroleum or the diesel. Diesel is having more amount of energy, right. If I say alcohol, alcohol is having lower amount of energy or energy per unit, you know, kg or per unit volume will be. Can I call it as a oxidizer? Because we know alcohol is a fuel or not, alcohol. What do you people might be taking, okay, <laughs> right. Okay, nowadays, people are taking you say what you call prestigious thing. <laughs> Earlier days, it was prohibited, you know, you should not take, you should take it as a medicine. Today, you take it as a prestige, <laughs> modern, <laughs> right. So, now alcohol is having low energy level, right. Can you call it? No, no. So, then how will define, how will differentiate, it is very important to differentiate it, right. So, you will have to look at what really happening in the chemical, because this fuel oxidizer when they you know react, then only some heat will be formed and then the, some light may be there, you know, then only combustion will take place, right. That means, there is some chemical reaction. So, we will have to look at from that point of view, that is like uh, what happens in the during the chemical reactions? What happens? You know, there will be bombardment, right? There will be breaking of bonds, right? And when breaking of bonds, how does it happen? There will be change of some electron, right? So, from that point of view, let us define that is basically a fuel can be defined as one which donates electron during chemical reaction. Right. That means, if something is you know donating, there should be some receiver. That means, whichever will receive that is the basically oxidizer, okay, giver and taker. Right. So, in life, if you want to live a very good life, therefore, you will be a giver and you will be also a donor. More you give, more you enjoy, more you are you getting my point? Therefore, in our scripture, people talk about danam, donate. Donation is very important. You will have to give, contribute for the society, for the your family, for others. Then only. That means, you will act as a fuel, not act as a oxidizer. All the time, we will be accepting. Right? We are doing, now we are grabbing. All the time, we are grabbing materials. Right? But you know, fuel is, should be there oxidizer should be there for the combustion worker. Similarly, in life, there should be toner, right. So, that is very important, right. So, you can relate that to your life, human life to the combustion, right. So, oxidizer is one which accept the electrons. Now, in order to look at that thing, we will have to define a property. Can anybody tell me what is that property? Electronegativity, Electro very good. So, electronegativity is basically a measure of tendency of an atom to attract a bonding pair of electrons, okay. That is the property. Of course, you can consider is as a extent of pull 
that one atom exerts an electron that is sharing with other atom because it will be shared, you will have to take it out, you know, kind of things. And this term electronegativity was coined by Linus Pauling, a Nobel laureate, right, who was the first person to talk about this. Then, you know, that comes. According to that, uh, this is also known as Linus scale. If you look at the elements, the fluorine is having 4, oxygen is having 3.5 and of course, the fuel if you look at carbon, hydrogen, all other things can be act as a fuel also, you know, bromine, uh, you know, and uh, boron, magnesium, aluminum is having, magnesium is having lowest values, others are increasing order, right. Now, a question might be coming to your mind, whether oxygen will act as a fuel, right. And can oxidizer act as a fuel? Is it possible? Oxidizer? Huh? Ah, what is that? You can table is there. So, if fluorine is there, right, then oxidizer will be acting as a fuel. Okay? So, you should keep that in mind. Very interesting thing. So, you should keep in mind because fluorine is having highest electronegativity, most powerful oxidizer. Of course, when you look at rocket engines, then you know we will, will be very much excited to use fluorine and it is very difficult to handle the fluorine. Okay. And oxygen as the second highest electron that you can see from this table, right? If it is the second, right. And uh, of course, the others thing like carbon, hydrogen, aluminum, magnesium, you know, these are basically used routinely as a fuel. You might be knowing carbon, hydrogen means hydrocarbon means carbon, hydrogen, okay, is not it? But the aluminum, magnesium, boron and other things, they are used in the rocket engines, you know, rocket propellants as a fuel, metal. So, uh, it is uh, having what you call uh, the, now you know what is the, what do you mean by fuel and oxidizer, how will jazz and other things, right, is that clear? So, now we will be looking at various types of fuel and oxidizer, right. So, there are several of them, but I have, we will be discussing uh, basically some of them and fuel and oxidizer can be broadly divided into three categories based on the, you know, physical uh, this thing. Uh, so, that is the gaseous, liquid and solid, right. So, gaseous fuel if you look at is um, being used very much gaseous and oxidizer in modern time particularly, right. In earlier days, uh, oxidizer means air, there is no problem, it is the gaseous form, but the fuel mostly wood. Okay. In very old days, I am talking about and later on it coal came or a charcoal. You know charcoal? What is charcoal? Any idea? Charcoal, coal, charcoal. When unwanted substances from coal are removed, uh -huh. we get charcoal. No, no, no. It is a wood. Okay. You can say that is a, you can say coke. That is a coke. Right. But the charcoal means wood particularly, when you will pyrolyze it, right, in the absence of oxidizer, right, then the volatiles will go away, the carbon will remain and that carbon we call charcoal, okay. So, that is even a solid fuel, right. Now, uh, but in modern time, we are very much interested in gaseous fuel and gaseous, ox of course, oxidizer always will be gaseous, but why? What are the reasons? Any idea? Ash content, huh? ash content. Ash content is very good, like ash content would be there. What else? Mixing will be good. What else? We do not need ex extra energy to make them uh, to gasify, right? to convert and if you look at the reaction will be very much you know taking place in gaseous phase. It is very easy for the gaseous phase to react and solid you know it will be difficult, right. 
and it will be igni igniting the mixtures will be very easy. I, I, I had mentioned in the last lecture that you know you want to ignite a wood, you will have to do a lot of work, you know like uh, igniting wood is very difficult, but igniting uh, any gas is much easier. So, okay. so um, if you look at it is easier to burn and then if it is easier to burn it will be having higher combustion efficiency even and easier to control emission that is why it is very what do you call important. And gas handling system is less expensive. For example, like uh, I want to handle the um, coal in a power plant, what I will have to do? If I will burn the coal, then I will not the way we do in a stove, bigger size, right, lumps. So, then what will happen? We will not get the amount of heat generated per you know um, unit volume, higher I want intensity should be higher, then I will have to make it powder, right. And making powder also you will have to make a crusher and the size should be good and then you will have to do this thing, put energy, so therefore it is right. So, um, of course, some of the uh, you know gaseous fuels uh, are basically CNG, CNG means compressed natural gas, LPG, liquid petroleum gas biogas, producer gas, co-given gas, acetylene, methane, hydrogen, butane, propane and extra any other gas you know like you can use. Of course, it should have certain good heating values you know right. And uh, similarly oxidizer if you look at gaseous oxidizer will be air and oxygen right ok. So, these are the things and um, uh, we will stop over here and we will look at in the next lectures about various applications of the various uh, uh, gaseous fuel and oxidizer. Thank you.